Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called God's Way to Deal with the Demons. Well, it's like God would have liked our parents to have learned to deal with the demons and then teach us from an early age how to deal with the demons too. But a lot of times that doesn't happen. But God's willing to help us to learn how to deal with the demons anytime we're willing to want to learn how to. First, you have to get saved through the cross of Jesus Christ. And then you got to get into God's Word with the Holy Spirit, your teacher. And then you find out that the devil's real and demons are real. And you let the Holy Spirit teach you how to defeat these demons. How to win your demon war. So if your natural father didn't teach you how to deal with the demons, your heavenly father can. So it's like you got to go back to the start of the Bible, the Garden of Eden. And there you see Satan trying to tempt Adam and Eve to believe lies about God and lies about sin and lies about themselves and lies about him. Satan's not telling him he's an evil enemy. He's trying to tell him he's a good friend. God's the evil enemy. I'm your good friend, says Satan. Follow me, Adam and Eve. But if you seek to follow Satan, you'll go to hell with Satan, because that's where he's going. And about 90% of the population want to follow Satan into hell. And about 10% of the population want to believe God, be a friend of God, and become an enemy of Satan. If you're not a friend of God, you're a friend of Satan. If you're not an enemy of Satan, you're an enemy of God. So I'll try to explain some of the things that God's taught me about how to deal with the demons. Well, it's like we've got three voices in our mind. We got our own voice, we got God's voice, we got Satan's voice. It's like we got three volume controls. We're deciding which one to turn up, which one to turn down, and it affects our success in life or our failure in life. We can turn up God's voice of truth, or we can turn up vo Satan's voice of lies, and our voice can try to reason out which one's best for us to listen to or to obey. It's like with elections or something. I think that we we get to vote or something. If you if you vote for Jesus, you don't vote for Satan to be your leader. If you vote for Satan to be your leader, you don't vote for Jesus to be your leader or boss or king or leader. So it's a choice. It's a decision. Who do you vote for? God to be your leader or Satan to be your leader? You only got two choices. Whose voice do you want to turn up? Uh, Satan's or God's in your mind? Most people have a mind full of Satan's lies today instead of a mind full of God's truth. Most people don't believe that they need to get saved and read the word and pray and seek God's help to win a spiritual war <laughs> and teach their kids how to do it from an early age. So. Satan deceives them and takes them captive to do his will. It's not just that human beings want to take us into slavery. Satan wants to take us into slavery. The Bible says that the curse or punishment for sin is slavery. The Bible says that Satan takes people captive to do his will. Jesus said about the religious leaders of his day, their father, their leader was Satan, and they wanted to do his will, to be liars and murderers too. So it's a choice. Do we want to follow God and do the things he wants us to do? Act loving? Get saved? Or not? Follow Satan and be selfish and not getting saved? We've got two choices. Truth or lies, salvation or no salvation, love or selfishness, or love or hate. So Satan's always trying to direct us to do the opposite of what God wants. He's always trying to get us to believe lies instead of truth. And if we can start to recognize this after we get saved, we can start to understand this stuff. Then we can start to resist this stuff and fight this stuff off and win the war against it. 
we win our war against the demons by resisting what they're telling us. That's not true. I don't believe that demons. I don't, I don't think sin's good for me. Like Adam and Eve thought it was. And it's like the demons try to get you to increase your sin. When you sin, you let the demons in. If you want to obey, God can chase the demons away. So there's this, uh, this thought of they're trying to get you to sin so they can get control over you. They're trying to get you to sin to take you captive to do their will. So one way to successfully deal with the demons is to choose to obey God, to pray and obey. It's like sometimes I have this thought that whenever you try to obey God, Satan tries to stop you. So we're supposed to be trying to get saved, get close to God, study his Bible, pray. As we study his Bible, the Holy Spirit can teach us truth about God and truth about the devil and truth about how to win the war against the demons if we want to learn these things. So if we don't want to get saved and we don't want to read the Bible, <laughs> we'll never deal with the demons successfully. If we want to do that, get saved. Study God's Word with His Holy Spirit teaching us His truth as we read it. Pray. Hear what God's telling us to do. Obey with His power to do it. Then we win this war against the demons. If we don't want to do that, we lose our war to the demons. It's that simple. And if you want to do what the demons tell you to do, then you'll be going to hell with the demons because they're going to hell. It's like something like uh, the demons are crazy and if you want to Follow the demons, you'll become crazy too. God is sane, and if you want to follow him, you'll be sane too. And the demons want us trying to get our happiness from the world and the things of the world instead of from God spiritually. Unless we want to try to get our love, joy, and peace from getting close to God and being filled with his Holy Spirit, we can't find that spiritual love, joy, and peace. And then we'll be looking for some kind of happiness from created things instead, physically. Junk, food, sex, drugs, entertainment. It's when you got a good relationship with God going, which the demons want to try to stop you from having, and you're getting love, joy, and peace from God spiritually from His Holy Spirit, that you defeat the demons. You win the war against the demons. Demons want you to increase your, your sinning. They want you to start out with a little sin, if they get you to believe it's a good thing for you, and turn it into a big sin to try to destroy you because they're our enemies, like Adam and Eve. We're trying to side with Satan, our enemy, God's enemy in the Garden of Eden. If you choose to be a friend of Satan, you make yourself an enemy of God. If you choose to be a friend of God, you make yourself an enemy of Satan. And uh, so... These demons are trying to get us to believe in lies. They're trying to get us to sin more. When you sin, you let the demons in. They get more control over you. They take you captive to do their will. And Jesus wants freedom from the demons. And that's through being his friend, God's friend. That's through obeying him, to read the Bible, learn truth from it, use it like a sword against these enemies. Being awake to it. It's like Satan's greatest lie is he doesn't exist. And as we get into the Bible, we find out he does exist. Just like we believe God exists, Satan exists, and demons exist. And demons are like a punishment for sin. You want to sin, God hands you over to your enemies, and that can be evil spirits. God handed King Saul over to his enemies, demons, to become greatly depressed and insane <laughs> and commit suicide. Instead of trying to obey God and defeating the demons, he sought to sin against God and be destroyed by the demons. So demon deliverance is sort of like people have did sin in their life. They haven't repented of it yet. The demons are taking control of their life, taking them captive to do their will. And unless they want to start to repent or change, Stop doing that. Stop believing their lies. Stop sinning. Start obeying God. They never get free from the demons. They never get successful demon deliverance. But if people want God to deliver them from the demons, and sometimes he uses Christians to help that out through demon deliverance, 
with the Holy Spirit guiding the process. I can't cast out demons by myself, but if Jesus is inside of me doing it through me, I can. So I've had lots of different experiences with demon deliverances and getting some demons out of me through other people praying for me and stuff like that. It's like if you had difficulty in your past, you could have let demons in. If you weren't a Christian in your past, you could have been doing all kinds of sin, letting demons in. And you need God to try to tell you what these sins are, and you need to repent of them when he tells you what they are. And then he'll deliver you from the demons. It's like a demon del captivity is like a punishment for sin. The Bible says that the wicked get slavery. That's not just to a pharaoh or a king or something, or of a nation. That's to demons, like what happened with King Saul. And King David wanted to listen to demons. He starts out with a little sin like lust. It turns into adultery, and then it turns into murder. And these demons do a lot of damage in David's life because he's choosing to believe their lies. Instead of being close to God, learning his truth, sexual lust can be harmful to you. Stay away from it, David. If we listen to God and do what he says, we can be obeying God, not sinning against God, having victory over the demons instead of being destroyed by the demons. So we've got to think of these different voices in our mind. Demons can cause negative thinking if we let them. By not recognizing that that's not my voice, that's the demon's voice. The demons want us to think that God doesn't love us, or the cross shouldn't be important to us, or the blood of Jesus shouldn't be important to us, or the Bible shouldn't be important to us, or prayer shouldn't be important to us, or trying to teach truth shouldn't be important to us. When it's just the opposite, when you read the Bible and you hear God trying to teach you what real truth is, if you'll... Let God teach you the truth and believe in the truth. You can win your war against the demons. And it's like the more you try to obey God, the more the demons try to target you to try to stop you. But there's so much power from God available that they could never do that if you didn't want to fall into sin and let them defeat you type thing. So the best way, God's way to deal with the demons is to Choose to start to believe that he's real, God is real, that you need to get saved through his son Jesus' cross, that he loves you, that he can give you his Holy Spirit to fulfill you with love, joy, and peace in his presence, that you're in a demon war, but if you keep believing God's truth and re keep resisting believing the demon's lies, you'll win the war against them. And you have to believe that the demons are real, you're in a war with them, you need to seek God's help to deal with them. To win the war against them it's like you when you hear their voice you got to say that's not the voice of God that goes according to scripture that's the voice of demons that go against the scripture God says sin is harmful the demons are telling me sins okay type stuff and that's the way you do it you get saved, you get into the Word, you find out what the truth is to believe in, then you recognize that these voices that are telling you to disobey God and sin aren't from your own voice of good reason in your mind, they're from demon enemies trying to destroy you with their lies. And then you use God's Word of truth that you've learned, reading the Bible, letting the Holy Spirit teach you truth through the Bible as you read it, to fight against these demons like a sword of truth, and you win the war against them. It's like the way Jesus did it in the wilderness temptation. Satan, which is like the demons, they both think alike, was trying to tell Jesus that it'd be better for him to make him Satan his God than to serve God the Father in heaven. It'd be better for Jesus to become king of the world and have all the kingdoms on earth than to become the king of heaven instead. Jesus didn't buy it. Jesus had the scriptures in him. He knew what was going on. He was being tested by God with Satan tempting him. And he said, no, Satan, God's word says, it is written, you're wrong, God's right. Until he kept resisting Satan's lies, 
with God's truth until Satan went away. And he won the war against Satan, the temptation against with Satan, and was able to continue obeying God for success. That's God's way to deal with the demons. Believe his truth, resist the devil's lies, and you'll deal with the demons successfully. And maybe you can teach other people how to do it once you learn how to do it, but they've got to want to have a good relationship with God too, else they're not going to be able to deal with the demons. If they don't want to get saved, they won't be able to deal with the demons correctly. If they don't want to read the Bible and let God's Holy Spirit teach them truth as they do it, they're not going to have any ammunition to use against the devil's lies. No truth from God to fight off the devil's lies. So that's a bit about God's way to deal with the demons.